Good morning. This morning we're going to look at Business Calculus with Excel Section 3.2 Numerical Derivatives and Limits Example number 2 out of that section looking at the intuitive limit of a simple function. We're going to approximate tangent lines by secant lines so f of x plus delta x minus f of x naught over delta x that's the slope between x naught f of x naught and x plus delta x f of x plus delta x taking the rise over the run and letting delta x get small. We're going to start with a simple example where f of x is x squared and x equals 1. I've set up example 2 in such a way that we're going to look at it and look at the, the graph of the function, compare the graph of the function to the secant line at a given point. x naught is the given x value, f of x naught or y naught is the y value at that point, delta x is the distance we're taking the secant line from. Now the graph is set up so that if delta x were a larger value like 5, the graph automatically spreads out and it's clear that the secant line isn't the same thing as the function itself. But if we made the secant line really small, 0.001, then the graph of the secant line and the graph of the function wind up overlapping each other and wind up being the same thing. So the tangent line and the secant line are going to look indistinguishable from each other. We're going to start at 1 and try to make some sense out of the intuitive definition. It's worthwhile at this point looking at the formulas. The formulas have, I've used name cells here from the example that was originally given. I've named cell B3 as delta x. I've named cell B2 as x naught and cell um, E1 is not named but delta Y is cell E2 because it makes the formulas easier to understand. My x values in the middle I'm going to have x naught. I'm going to back up five delta x steps and then start adding delta x to get my values. I similarly am going to start y and for the secant line back up that number of values and go forward that number of values. That gives me the secant line. x and f of x gives me the slope of the curve. If I now look at it I'm going to accumulate things. So if delta x is 1 the slope was 3. So I want to remember that. If x delta x is 0.1, it does the computations for me, and the slope is 2.1. If the slope is 0.01, if the delta x is 0.01, I'm getting 2.01. And if the slope is 0.001. I'm going to get a slope at this point it says 2. I'm going to give it a couple of more digits and so it's 2.001. Now we also want to look at what happens if delta x is minus 1. In that case the slope starts as 1. If the slope is minus 0 0.1 the slope is 1.9. If the slope, if the delta x is minus 0 0.01, the slope is 1.99. And if I look at the delta x being minus 0 0.001, the slope is 1.999. Intuitively, I'm looking at it and saying this slope is going to 2, this slope is going to 2. The limit as I let x, delta x get really small 
is the slope is 2. If I look and say, well, let's just keep doing that further and further, there's a problem with this definition. So for part 2, when I look at the formulas, I've got x naught and x plus delta x naught and f of x naught and f of x plus delta naught and the slope, either the right or the left slope, is taking the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. And I can do that pretty systematically and just keep making delta x smaller and smaller. The problem we run into is the slopes look like they're converging to 2 and then they disappear. Part of what's going on is if I give it more digits, this gets further and further and we run into what's called round off error that x plus delta x, if the di difference is too small, Excel thinks those are the same numbers and so thinks it's really just one and so you're evaluating at the one point. So when I look at the slopes, the slopes disappear and the right, the x, f of x and so x and x plus delta x seem to be the same thing. There's a couple of hidden digits for a while, but then it just disappears. What this means is just taking smaller and smaller delta x's runs into computational problems. So what we're going to do is intuitive tangents. I'm going to make a slight difference. Instead of a right-handed slope, I'm going to use what's called a balance difference quotient. I'm looking at x a little beyond where I want it and a little before, so right and left are dealt with symmetrically, and this will give me a secant line, and notice that if I simply plug it in, that gives me the exact value I want. So this is the definition of numeric derivative that we're going to use. f of x plus 0 0.001 minus f of x minus 0 0.001 divided by 0.002, and it gives the correct slope. Thank you.